What would happen if you sat down with the world's biggest book, three billion letters long, and your task was to copy it word for word, letter by letter, without skipping a line, without repeating a word, and without making a single spelling mistake? That feels impossible, right? But here's the twist. Your body is already doing this. Every time a cell divides, it copies this entire book with astonishing accuracy. And it doesn't just happen once. It happens billions of times as you grow, heal, and live your daily life. For example, when your skin closes up after a cut, that's DNA replication working silently in the background. Now here's my question. Can you think of another everyday moment when your DNA is busy making copies? Share your guess in the comments. I'll be looking for the most creative answers. Let's return to our main topic, DNA replication. Replication simply means to copy, and our DNA has the remarkable ability to copy itself. In simple terms, DNA replication is the biological process by which a cell duplicates its DNA before cell division, ensuring that each new cell receives an exact genetic blueprint. But here's something interesting. Not all cells behave the same way. Some cells, like skin cells, are constantly replicating their DNA. In fact, your body produces millions of new cells every single day. Other cells, such as those in the liver or kidneys, replicate only occasionally. They step in to divide when damage occurs, but under normal conditions, they remain hidden and quiet. And then there are certain cells that never divide at all. Once they are damaged, they are lost forever. Can you guess which cells these might be? DNA replication is a complex but fascinating process. To understand it more easily, scientists divide it into three main stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. Let's begin with the first step. The first stage of DNA replication is called initiation. But before we dive in, here is a quick recap for you. DNA has a unique double helical structure, a twisted ladder that serves as the backbone of life. This backbone is made up of repeating units of sugar and phosphate, connected by strong phosphodiester bonds. Attached to this backbone are the nitrogenous bases, four in total. The larger ones are called purines, adenine and guanine. The smaller ones are pyrimidines, thymine and cytosine. Together, they form pairs through hydrogen bonding, adenine always with thymine, and guanine always with cytosine. This elegant pairing is the very reason DNA can be copied with such precision. And now, we're ready to see how the cell begins that process in the first stage, initiation. To begin any process, we need the right tools. So, what does the cell require to start initiation? First, a starting point, specific locations on the DNA called origins of replication. These are the sites where the process begins. At these origins, an enzyme called helicase attaches to the DNA. Its job is to unwind the double helix, pulling apart the two strands. This unzipping creates a Y-shaped structure known as the replication fork, the main stage where replication will take place. But here's a challenge. Once the strands are separated, they naturally want to curl back and stick together. To prevent this, another group of proteins steps in, the single-strand binding proteins. They act like tiny bookmarks, holding the strands apart and keeping the helix open. Now the DNA is unlocked, unzipped, and stabilized. The stage is perfectly set for the next step, elongation. The stage has been set for elongation, but what do we need to begin? Three key players, DNA polymerase, primase, and a steady supply of nucleotides. The nucleotides are already available inside the nucleus, ready to be used. But here comes the real challenge. DNA polymerase, the enzyme responsible for building new DNA, cannot start from scratch. It needs a starting signal, a kind of launch pad. That signal is provided by primase, another enzyme. Primase lays down a short stretch of RNA called the primer. This tiny primer acts like a flag, marking the exact spot where DNA polymerase can attach and begin adding nucleotides, one by one, to build the new strand. Once the primer is in place, DNA polymerase steps in. 
It begins adding new nucleotides, one by one, perfectly matching adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. The new strand grows only in the 5N to 3N direction, precise, accurate, and incredibly fast. But remember, DNA is double-stranded, and the two strands run in opposite directions. One runs from 3 to 5, the other from 5 to 3. Because DNA polymerase can only build in the 5 to 3 direction, the two strands are copied differently. The leading strand is easy. It grows smoothly and continuously, like writing a sentence from left to right. But the lagging strand is trickier. Since it runs in the opposite 3 to 5 direction, replication here has to happen in short bursts. Small segments, called Okazaki fragments, are built piece by piece. But how? Primase lays down a short RNA primer, and DNA polymerase extends it, adding nucleotides until it reaches the end of that fragment. Then the process starts again further down the strand, primer, polymerase, extension, over and over, forming multiple fragments. But these fragments can't just remain separate. First, the RNA primers must be removed. In bacteria, DNA polymerase 1 takes care of this. In eukaryotes, it's RNAs H and DNA polymerase delta. These enzymes replace the RNA primers with the correct DNA bases. Finally, another enzyme, DNA ligase, seals the gaps, stitching the Okazaki fragments into one continuous strand. So here's the puzzle. If one side is copied seamlessly while the other is pieced together, how does the cell keep both perfectly synchronized? The answer lies in the final stage, termination. Now the stage is set for the final act, termination. By this point, both strands have been copied. The leading strand in one smooth flow, the lagging strand in carefully stitched fragments. But the work isn't finished yet. The cell has one more responsibility, to check, fix, and finish the job. Here's how. After DNA polymerase has done its main work, it also acts like a built-in proofreader. If the wrong nucleotide slips in, it can backtrack, cut it out, and replace it with the correct one. This makes replication one of the most accurate processes in biology, with an error rate as low as one mistake in a billion bases. Next, any leftover gaps or nicks in the sugar phosphate backbone are sealed shut by DNA ligase. Think of ligase as the final editor, gluing the Okazaki fragments together into one seamless strand. Without it, the DNA would remain fragile and incomplete. And just like that, the cell has successfully duplicated its entire genome, billions of bases, copied with breathtaking speed and precision. If you want a full breakdown of DNA's structure, make sure to watch this video. I'll see you there. Until then, keep exploring the wonders of life.